Uh, again, I'm Matthew Nosey from Chicago Spine and Joint Care. It's a chiropractic clinic. I'm a chiropractic physician. Um, our clinic's about two blocks from here. We uh, combined uh, chiropractic care with nutrition, which is one of the uh, presentations we're going to be doing, along with medical massage therapy um, and rehabilitation. Uh, so we like to, to look at health as a whole rather than, than treat one particular thing, but really we're treating a lot of uh, low back pain, neck pain, um, joint injuries, chronic uh, pain, a lot of headaches, stuff like that, but we treat it in many different ways. Go ahead. So we got two, um, two presentations that we're going to do. First one's uh, nutrition and health, and then uh, nutrition as it relates to health, and uh, the second one's going to be work biomechanics, and specifically because you guys are in an office setting, we're going to be talking about office biomechanics, so it's not going to be a lot of um, talking about lifting or doing a lot of manual labor, it's going to be sitting at the desk working at the computer and that type of stuff, which can, can lead to pain and, and lead to problems and lead to health problems as well. So we're going to talk about that um, after, and then we're going to have a little bit of a demonstration at the end, hopefully, if we have time, I think we will. I'm going to give you a couple handouts. These are going to be um, some of the exercises that we uh, demonstrate. If you can just pass them back, actually, it would be easier. Should be enough. I'll leave them here in case there's not enough. Uh, so hopefully we'll get to demo a little bit of this stuff at the end. Um, nutrition and uh, work biomechanics uh, are something I have particular interest in. One, we do it a lot uh, at our clinic, but also uh, because it's a part of healthcare uh, called proactive healthcare. So really, there's there's two ways you can look at healthcare. One is reactive healthcare, which is what most people think of when they think of um, the healthcare system, it's uh, wait till you're sick, wait till you get sick, or wait until you're injured, or, or wait till something goes wrong, and then you go in and get whatever that is fixed, whether it be um, taking medication, surgery, therapy, a hospitalization, whatever you're trying to fix a condition. Proactive healthcare, which encompasses nutrition, um, biomechanics, um, regular dental checkups, uh, physicals, uh, blood glucose screenings, uh, blood pressure screenings, all that type of stuff. Anytime where you're trying to catch a disease early or prevent a disease from happening, that's proactive um, healthcare. Uh, really, that's the way that healthcare in the future is going to have to go. It, it's really unsustainable as uh, treating a disease. So, this is what I'm uh, really big in and really kind of profess. So, uh, these two lectures will give you a little bit of insight. Um, as far as that goes. Uh, the first one we'll start with is nutrition and health. And we'll just talk about first why it's even important to uh, worry about your nutrition, why, why proper nutrition is important, and really it affects everything uh, about your life. Energy level, weight, uh, it'll affect your lifespan, memory, disease prevalence. Really the big one on here is gonna be the weight issue. Uh, <laughs> the obesity, uh, gaining weight, directly correlates to a lot of preventable disease. Um, the other one's energy level, uh, memory, uh, your mood, depression, anxiety, all that type of stuff uh, can be affected by nutrition just because of the nutrient level that you're getting. If you're not getting the right amount of nutrients, um, memory, energy level, all that kind of stuff can, can be off as well, but really the big one is gonna be weight, so that's what we're gonna talk about first. Um, this is an obesity. Uh, diagram of the United States from the Centers of Disease Control, and this is as far back as 1994. So really it's going state by state, and it's talking about what percentage of the population of each state is in the obese category. Um, obese is defined technically or medically as o a BMI over 30%, body mass index. Body man mass index is one tool uh, that's used to uh, help determine if somebody's at risk for some of these diseases, the obesity-related diseases. It's, it's a tool, it's not all-encompassing, it needs to be um, taken into consideration with things like weight and, and uh, uh, fat percentage. Accurate. What's that? Is all that accurate though? It's a, they're tools. Uh, body mass index can be skewed by if you're um, shorter. I would, I think when I was in college and I was a football player, mm -hmm. I was considered obese based upon that index. Because you had a, a bigger body mass but not a large percentage of fat. Bodybuilders are often considered obese be, for the same reason, probably. Yeah. Yeah, um, 6'2", 225, but, touching 320. But muscle, but yeah, mostly muscle. muscle. Right, so, so you would be, right. <laughs> so, you, so a lot of that kind of football players, bodybuilders are notorious for it, of being obese, even though they're not at risk for any of these uh, obesity-related diseases. And, uh, that being said, the, the map of the United States, 1994, uh, 15 years ago, yeah, 
um, the light, lightest light blue here is under 10%. The, nowhere in the country is the population under 10% um, obese. The next one up, the lighter light blue, most of the country fits into this one, 10 to 14%. The darker blue, most of the Midwest is notoriously known and, and most of the South uh, as being the more obese uh, parts of the country. Um, but nowhere in, nowhere in the country as far back as 1994 do we have up to 25% obesity rate. Anybody have a guess of what's going to happen when I change the slide? It's going to be totally different. <laughs> it's going to go up just a little bit. So um, again, Midwest, uh, up to 25% obesity. And this is in 2000, same, uh, same statistic from the Centers of Center of Disease Control. Um, the rest of the country has pretty much caught up to what the Midwest was in 1994, um, up to 20% obesity. Um, next one, we got one more slide, up or down, you think? Uh. Up. So basically what this one is telling us, and this is uh, 2008, so this is the most recent one they've done as far as I know. Um, most of the country is now over 25% obese, which is, which again, we'll talk about in the next slide, leads to a lot of diseases um, that not only individual will have to deal with, but the nation as a whole needs to get a kind of a grip on this. And you can see the last um, little box, over 30%. We have six states that are over 30% obese by population now. So what this chart is telling us is that we need to make more boxes. There's gonna have to be a 30 to 35 box in the next one. There's gonna have to be a, you know up to 50, who, who knows? But this is something that, again, isn't sustainable. This has to be reversed or it'll, this will uh, potentially collapse healthcare by itself. Uh, for whatever reason, Colorado is uh, the most healthy state and has been uh, since they uh, started keeping the statistics. So, you know why Colorado is much more healthy? Let's hear it. They're, the things there are few and far between, and you see people in Colorado, their bikes, their jobs. Oh yeah. And you go through the mountains, you see people riding up the mountain on a, on a bike. Right. And we're talking a steep mountain. I've been to Colorado many times, yeah. and that's why those people are there. Well, <laughs> we need more, uh, we, we need things to be spread out on more mountains than in, in the country, I don't know. Um, so now we're gonna talk a little bit about, you know, that's what's happening, that's the trend in the country, but now, you know, why does that matter? 10% um, of healthcare spending is spent directly on obesity, and that's spent on things like high, high blood pressure, diabetes, arthritis, um, all kinds of cardiovascular problems, all of the, the diseases that are um, typically related to obesity. Um, obese individuals themselves spend 42% more per year on their health care than uh, the average population or what, what would, we would hope the average population would be. The problem with this is that most of that is spent on prescription drugs that are trying to treat the diseases that are related to the obesity, not the obesity itself, which is the underlying root cause. Um, so obese individuals are spending money to treat the disease, but not really fixing the problem. Um, that's great for uh, drug company profits. That's not great for the country as a whole or the individual. Um, so really, there's, there's two costs to this. One is to the individual's health, and one is to the healthcare system and, and the financial system um, of the country and the individual as a whole. Um, those are the related, some of the related diseases. Um, high blood pressure is the obvious one, diabetes, stroke, all the, the cardiovascular, but then there's also, also arthritis. Um, as you load the joints with more uh, weight, they break down faster. Um, depression's correlated. Um, again, a lot of mood disorders are correlated um, with obesity and poor nutrition in, in general. 